welcome to another historic moment. When I read you the book that I wrote, C is for Chester, and I got to G is for Tammy Grimes, it made me think that I have a lot more information about Tammy Grimes that I would like to share with you. Tammy was born in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1934. Her mother was Eola Willard, a naturalist and spiritualist. Eola wrote poems, and there is a book of poems in the Chester Historical Society Museum that you could read. Her father, Luther, was a country club manager and farmed when he came to Chester. This fabulous old photo was given to the Historical Society by Webb Anderson. From left to right is Tammy, Mary Sanborn, Nancy Grimes, John Hazelton, and Webb Anderson. Tammy's grandfather, Dr. Lauren Grimes, lived where the fire station is now. If you look on the edge of the road, you'll see a set of steps that go up the hill where the house would have been. He bought his son Luther Butternut Farm, a salt box on the corner of Ledge Road and Raymond Road when Tammy was one month old. This is a photo of Nicholas Grimes, Tammy Grimes' brother. This great photo was given to us also by Webby Anderson. It was here that Tammy Grimes, her sister Nancy Grimes, and her brother Nicholas Grimes spent all their summers. Tammy had her education at a private school in Massachusetts and then went off to New York City to a theatrical school. Tammy was married three times in her lifetime her first marriage was to Christopher Plummer. Yes, the Christopher Plummer of The Sound of Music. Christopher Plummer is still living today. Tammy Grimes and Christopher Plummer had one child together. Her name is Amanda Plummer, and she is an actress also. Amanda has been in many movies. Here she is in Pulp Fiction, and here she is starring in The Hunger Games. Tammy was a very successful actress. She was first discovered in a nightclub by the playwright Noel Coward. Here she is in 1960 in The Unsinkable Molly Brown. For this, she won a Tony Award and later won a second Tony for The Private Lives. Tammy was originally chosen to play the part in Bewitched, which she turned down to do the Tammy Grimes show. The part was later given to Elizabeth Montgomery. The Tammy Grimes show was not a great success and did not last long, but she played many other parts on television, including Route 66. Tammy was on so many television shows, it's hard to list them all. She preferred Broadway and was in the original 42nd Street. Many, many movies. She won the Obie Award, the Theater World Award, and two Tonys. Tammy recorded several song albums. She also was on radio. Her very raspy voice was one that you could recognize anywhere. Tammy bought a house on Ledge Road diagonal to her father Luther Grimes' house, and her sister Nancy Grimes bought a house on Ledge Road also. It was here that they spent their summers and where they met many Chester residents. Tammy's second husband was Jeremy Slate. He was a TV actor. They were married for only one year. Her third husband she married in 1971. She married composer Richard Bell, 
who she loved dearly until his death in 2005. Richard died in her house in Chester, overlooking the, her apple trees. He is buried in Great Hill Cemetery, where Tammy is buried also. About 10 years ago, Tammy did a farewell concert in the Congregational Baptist Church in Chester. The program to this concert can be seen at the Chester Historical Society Museum. Once when Tammy was in Chester, I asked if she would not mind standing in front of her poster so I could get a picture of the young Tammy Grimes and the older Tammy Grimes. Little did I know until I started doing this program and searching for photos of her that somebody had done something similar, but when she was younger. Later in Tammy's life, when she went back to New York to live permanently, she did cabaret. She took a fall in her apartment, which took her to an assisted living, and in 2016, she died in New Jersey at 82 years old. She is survived by her brother, Nick, and her daughter, Amanda. Tammy had a graveside funeral service at Great Hill Cemetery, which is on Sandown Road. She is buried with her mother and father and her beloved third husband, Richard. Tammy's brother, Nick, could not make the funeral service. So he had Tammy's nephew read a letter from him to be read at the funeral on Great Hill Cemetery in Chester. I'm going to read it to you. Um, he called Tammy Tam and his sister Nancy Nan, and he mentions Judy's Pond, which was on Raymond Road, a little bit further down than their house on Ledge Road, and also mentions Judy's store. And we have in the Chester Historical Society Museum some memorabilia from Judy's store. And you should visit the museum. It's open the second Saturday of every month from 10 in the morning till 12 noon. I do have to put a pair of glasses on this. Print is so small. Tam. In this Chester field, now free from mortal restraints, and he's talking about the field at the Great Hill Cemetery. Think back <clears throat> to Butternut Farm, when the screen door banged behind us, and you, Nan, and I, balancing bulging black inner tubes, headed for Judy's Pond. You at nine, skipping in the sun shimmering heat. Nan, 12, tall, already beautiful, sweeping her legs through the tall grass. And I, six, pumping my little legs to catch up. Pete the horse accepted your nuzzle and then turned and river danced as mother smart in her riding tog, swept through the barn door like a barn swallow. Nan wistfully looked toward Webb's house. How she glowed in his tall, handsome presence. Webb Anderson? Nan wistfully looked toward Webb's house how she glowed in his tall, handsome presence. With cascades of laughter, our great inner tube naval war mounted until you, with your strong swimmer's legs, took victory. When we plunged under the dam's waterfall, our laughter turned to yelps and then to shrieks. As we yanked squirming leeches off of each other. Down to Judy's lunch, we hopped like Mexican jumping beans on hot tarred splattered gravel where we traded Indian heads 
Nichols. I for an orange crush, Nan a cream soda, and you a moxie that clearly either entered your bloodstream for a good or altered your genetic code for it capulated you to stardom. After mother's luscious love-filled sandwiches, we pushed through the bushes at North Pond Shore and loaded string-handled coffee tins with plump blueberries to take back to Aunt Vivi, freshly arrived to transform into pies that have never been surpassed. After we all played peekaboo and squiggle toes with a static beaming baby Scott, we ran to our forts in the barn for a horse bun fight. From the haylofts and cow stall, dried buns flew like flack and shreks mounted until finally someone got a bun in the mouth, which was just in time because father's horn beeped as he arrived for the weekend and we flew on surges of anticipation to show him our week's triumphs. He beamed and clapped as you pedaled your new bike with a resolve and pride that you would injure engine. Later, as you marched across the stage, a mop for a scepter and a pail for a crown as Molly Brown on opening night. Father sizzled steaks over crimson coals in the dining room fireplace. And stuffed, we climbed the 200 year old steps to our beds, snuggled under our summer blankets and blew out the candles, which was the signal for mosquitoes to rev up. We drifted to sleep as the church bell told uptown and the whippoorwill called from the blueberry thicket. Tonight may the whippoorwill sing thee to thy rest. Here's a photo of Tammy and I together and I do hope that you get a chance to go up to Great Hill Cemetery to visit Tammy.